In PowerPoint, I can add several items to a slide, and I might want to layer them. A typical reason I'd layer pictures, for example, is so I can show one and then the other using animation effects. But how do I work with each of these items to apply an effect or other formatting if one is hidden behind the other? This is an even bigger issue when there are more than two items. In the past, I've used the Bring to Front and Send to Back commands to work with layered items. But in PowerPoint 2007, there's now an easier way. It's called the Selection and Visibility pane. I can find it in the Editing group on the Home tab. I click Select and then Selection pane. I can also find it on the Arrange menu. Here's the pane. I'll demonstrate how to use it working with this PowerPoint slide. The selection pane lists all the items that are on the slide. For example, Oval Callout 3 refers to the oval shape on the slide. How can I be sure of that? Because when I select an item in the pane, that item is also selected on the slide. I see the selection handles around that shape, the oval callout. Picture 2 represents the maze picture. Even the title placeholder is included. An important advantage here is that if I were strictly a keyboard user, all I'd have to do is put the focus on the selection pane by pressing Shift plus F6 and use the up and down arrow keys to select things on the slide. Another thing I can do in the selection pane is rename each item to a name that's most useful to me. I'll drop the number from Oval Callout. This can be a great help if you have many items on the slide with default names that are too much like each other. And I can change the order of the items in a way that makes sense to me. For this slide, I plan to add an animation effect to each shape. I'll order the maze picture above the oval callout, as that will be the order of the animations. This also changes their tab order on the slide. If I want to work with only one of the items, I use these eye symbols to hide the ones I don't need to see right now. To hide the picture, I click the eye next to it. That closes the eye, which hides the picture. I'll use the selection pane now as I add animation effects. Note. I don't have to use it. The point in using it is that it makes it easier for me to see and work with one thing on the slide at a time. To work first with the picture, I'll hide the oval callout. I start by opening the Custom Animation Task pane. I click the Animations tab and click Custom Animation. The Custom Animation Task pane appears between the Slide pane and the Selection pane. To add the animation effect, I first have to select the picture on the slide. I can do that by selecting the picture in the selection pane. Of course, I could also select the picture by clicking it directly on the slide. The selection pane just gives me a different way to do it. I want the picture to exit when I click it, so I'll add an exit animation effect. I display the Add Effect menu, click the Exit category, and choose Fly Out. PowerPoint shows a preview of the effect. To work only with the oval callout, I'll hide the picture in the selection pane and show the oval callout. I select the oval callout. To make the callout appear after the picture exits, I'll add an entrance effect to it. I click Add Effect, Point to Entrance, and click an effect. I want Spinner. PowerPoint gives an instant preview. The effect I chose shows in the Custom Animation Task pane. To see all the animation effects I've applied, I need to show everything on the slide. I can click Show All in the Selection pane, and that unhides all items. All items show now in the Selection pane and on the slide. Time out for an important message. Always unhide what you've hidden, or it won't show on the slide in your show. Now that all items show, all the animation effects I applied to them show too. Here's the exit effect for the picture. Exit effect icons are red, and the entrance effect for the oval callout. Entrance effect icons are green. Let's look at the preview to see how the animation plays. Yes, that's how I want the effects to work. Note that to do more with how these effects play, to change their speed or how they start, I'd make adjustments in the Custom Animation pane. I'll close that for now. And until I want help in working with layered items on a slide again, I'm done with a very handy selection pane.